Uh, welcome everyone to the Word Church. Uh, my name is Pastor Sky. Uh, we've been uh, we're just kicking off this uh, uh, the sunset service, and I hope that everyone is has been enjoying them so far. I, I really hope that as we're continually going, uh, learning more, getting into the message that we'll really be able to get ourselves to understand uh, why we're doing the things that we do. And especially today, I want to talk about a very, uh, it's a very important subject, but it's actually very touchy and, and it, it could be a little bit touchy, right? And it's about losing everything, well, losing everything, right? So this is a little bit touchy sensitive, right? Because I'm talking about the things that you really like, right? Like the, your favorite glasses, your favorite shirt, your golf clubs, whatever it is, right? We're talking about losing everything. And uh, the reason I want to talk about this is because um, lately uh, I've been losing everything, okay? I just turned 40 uh, two days ago, three days ago, and uh, it seems like I'm losing everything in my life, starting from my birthday, when I hit 43 on September 6th, uh, I woke up with a bad back, right? It just, it just happened. My back was hurting, and I woke up with a bad back. I'm like, oh, gosh, like, what is this? And then I played sports on Friday, and then it got worse, right? And uh, on uh, Saturday, I couldn't tell anyone this, but I lost my keys until I found them still inside the door. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's really interesting because... Uh, now that I'm, you know, I don't think it's because I'm 40. I just think I notice it more because I'm 40, right? I just think I just notice it more. I think it's, it hasn't been like some drastic shift. Uh, it's been happening constantly, and I'm just noticing it because not only myself, but people, uh, I think they, uh, they're very kind to remind me that I'm 40 over the last three days. They're very, very kind. Uh, they remind me several times in the same conversation, right? So I'm very grateful and thankful to everyone, but I ask you to uh, not be as kind uh, as you are now, okay? So here I am, and you know, for me, in my mind, because I hit 40, right? And 40 is a big milestone because you think to yourself, it's like, oh, 40, you know. Well, you thought this at 32, but I'm like, oh, you know, my, you know everything's downhill from here. Right? And you lose things like your hair, you lose your, you lose your like memory, right? Uh, you lose like the sense of taste, right? Like you have to start pouring more and more sugar into it, right? Or more and more salt until you taste something, right? And, uh, you know, I was thinking about, you know, because I've been, you know, 40 is such a big thing that probably for about the last six months, I've been kind of like prepping myself, thinking about the things uh, that have changed over the last 40 years. And there's, there's some things I was thinking about. Uh, for instance, uh, when, I, when I talk about hair, right, when I, when I was younger, there's this, there's this essential thing for your hair when I was like in high school and university. And this, there was this hairspray. It was called Joico Ice Mist, right? The reason why it's called Ice Mist because your hair turns as hard as ice, right? And what I would do is like, you know, you get like this regular gel and you like start doing your hair, right? And then you make sure there's like nothing sticking out, right? Or you go and you, 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 you take scissors and you cut, up, cut it up a bit. And then at the end, you like start pouring until it got so hard, right? That even if like someone like I hit you over the head or like, you know, you're in a typhoon, like your, your clothes and everything's like blowing, but your hair stays the same. It just stays there, right? And it's what's even crazier is, is when you take a shower, it takes forever. Like you sit there and the water's dripping, but it's just dripping off, right? It doesn't go through your hair. It's, it's the craziest thing. And that's like, that was my essential. And I would spray my hair so much, it'd be like solid, right? It would be solid. And I was realizing how much I really cared about uh, my hair when I was in my teens and in my university. And nowadays, I'm just like, you know, I think some of the guys understand this is like, we just try to cut it as short as possible so we don't have to do anything with it, right? Like if it's short enough, you wake up and you're like, oh, it still looks the same. And then you kind of go on with your day, right? And, uh, you know, and I was like, wow, you know, I don't really care about it as much as I did before. I just don't, right? And another thing I thought about was my image, right? And the image that I had when I was, in, when I was younger uh, I used, you know, a lot of the people won't believe this because I'm totally not like this, but I was like a gym junkie. Six days a week, two and a half hours, right, of working out. And I'm not talking working out, I'm talking like trying to pick up the heaviest weight possible, right? Like, ah! And like, you know, and you, like, I spend more time in front of the mirror at the gym just looking 
at myself go once. Like, Argh! Argh! and I used to see the veins popping out and stuff, and I'm lifting a five pound weight. Like, Argh! right? And I, I would, I would like look at myself in the mirror. When you're taking a shower, you take off your shirt, and you kind of like sit there like, I start flexing the mirror. You know, you have like, you know, the, 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 the chest, you're like, dong, 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 dong. I would be doing this like, oh, when can I do it like, like Arnold Schwarzenegger, right? And we would, and back in my days, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger is like, like 60 something right now, right? Arnold Schwarzenegger is 60 something. But in my day, he was at his prime. Like we're talking 20s and 30s, like 30, like, you know, he was in his prime. He was like Mr. Universe. He was everything. Everybody wanted to be like Arnold Schwarzenegger and we would, I would just pump iron and I wouldn't even care if I went by myself. I would sometimes, even if my car wouldn't work, I'd take a bus and I couldn't miss my time at the gym. Nowadays, um, I go to the gym to shower and uh, if I have time, I'll look at some of the machines like, oh, that's a good machine to use later on in life, right? Oh, that was, I, I used to use that machine. And I started thinking about this because a lot of, you know, the reason why I'm bringing this up is this is today's scripture, okay? Today's scripture we look at is Luke chapter 14, verse 31 to 33. And this is a very interesting verse uh, that came up that popped up while I, while I was preparing for this, right? Luke chapter 14, verse 31 to 33. And it says that, or what king going to war against another king will not first sit down and decide if he's able with 10,000 to oppose the one who comes against him? with 20,000. If not, while the other is still far away, he sends a delegation and asks for a term of peace. In the same way, therefore, every one of you who does not say goodbye to all his possessions cannot be my disciple. And that's why today's message is about losing everything, okay? Losing everything, okay? Because if you think about that last verse, verse 33, Anyone who does not say goodbye to every possession they have cannot be my disciple. Now, when you're looking at your life in Christ or when your life is with God, right? You have to think to yourself is, what are the things, you know, you have to think to yourself, you know, a lot of us think this is, what am I losing, right? What am I losing? Like, what are you losing, right, so that you can come to Christ? And the answer here says it's everything, right? You can't have any possessions. Every possession has to be thrown away in order for you to really, truly be called God's disciple. Now, here's the thing. This is the reason when I, was, I, I brought this up about me becoming 40 and the things that I used to value and I didn't. The thing that I found very interesting is this. The things I valued 10 years ago, I don't value them the same as I do now. They're completely different. And, I, and I'm looking at everyone here too is a lot of us here too has like rock solid ice mist hair, right? Some of you have it, right? The rock solid ice mist hair, right? And, and, and the way you dress or the way the things that you have, the way you hold yourselves, oh, it, it just reminds me of like, well, not 10 years. That for me is 25 years ago, right? Right? So it's a long time ago, right? But when we think about this, it's like, okay, huh, this is interesting, right? So the question is, what drives your decision? What makes you make your decisions every day? Like, what is driving it that you're, oh, my decision is based on this, right? What do you have to lose is the question. Like, what are you losing? And the thing I realize is your reason, the reason, your fundamental reason you make your decisions, it cannot be based on things that are changing constantly. Why? Because if they're based on things like rock solid hair, in the future, you may not have any hair, right? It's true. You might not have hair. You might not even care about hair by that point, right? Because you're, you know, you're already married. You have 14 kids and they still love you even if you're, you're fat and bald, right? It might, it might change, right? Which means that what is driving your decision is if you have things that are driving your decision that are changing constantly like a trend, right? Then what happens is your decisions will constantly change as the things you value change too. What does that mean? Let me, I want you to think about this. Think about the things you like to do or that you really, really like and how you go about it, 
okay? So let me give an example. Like some people, like guys like sports, girls like what? Ice cream, good. Good sports and ice cream. Okay. Ice cream. Anything else? Shopping, ice cream, sports. Like, you know, for, for guys in sports, an interesting thing is this, is like, um, say, I, I know some guys here play golf and stuff like that, and it's, you, can't, you, can't, you can't play golf when it's raining, right? If it's too hard. But yet, the craziest part is, if you really, really like golf, even if it starts raining, you still think about, huh, I wonder if the rain will, you know, oh, you know, I think we can still play. I think we still do this, right? It's like, come on, it's not like a tornado, right? We might as well go play. Like, as long as I hit the ball and it goes and the tornado doesn't take the ball and like throw it out somewhere else, I'll do it, right? And even for me, when I played sports when I was younger, I wouldn't care if it snowed. I would go out when it's snowing and I would play football, right? And, and I think to myself this, oh, it's more fun because it's in the snow, right? Now, if it's snowing outside, I don't think about leaving the house, right? It's the last thing you think about is going out. But when I was younger, when that thing was so important to me, it didn't make a difference what it was. It didn't make a difference. It's snowing, wow, it would be more fun, right? Think about it. If you can golf in the snow and they allowed you to, you'd probably go, right? You probably would. If you could play soccer in the rain, do you care? You don't care, right? If it's raining, but it's the day you set aside to go shopping, would you say, oh, it's raining, oh, I, maybe I shouldn't go out anymore, and maybe I shouldn't go shop anymore. The only reason you'd stop is if your hair mattered more than shopping, right? Got to think about this. Think about the things that you really, really like and how you do those things. And I, I think the best example for us is when it comes to love, right? Because when it comes to love, the thing that's very interesting in my mind is uh, the things I do for love, or like, you know, the, when you're in high school, it's like puppy love, right? But here's the thing. It's like, you, could be, you can have the busiest day of your life. The next day you have a test. You've procrastinated already, right? You've procrastinated to that point, and you know that you have to spend that time studying. But if the girl that I like says, hey, what are you doing tomorrow? I'm like, oh, uh, nothing. <laughs> Why? Do you feel like doing something, right? <laughs> My whole day is studying. But because I like that girl and I'm so interested in her, the moment she says, are you busy tomorrow? No, why would I be busy? I'm not busy. Like, what, what, what would you like to do, right? It's like, you know, I, you know can you carry my stuff? Because I'm moving. Sure, sure, of course, I'll, I'll help you move, right? Sure, and because, you know, if, if, when I like that girl so much, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter what she asked me to do. Oh, can you push my car while I'm in it? Because I need to practice driving, but I can't turn on the engine. Can you just push the car? It's like, all right, okay, okay all right, cool. All right, no problem, right? And you're like, ah, ah, right? And you're doing it for like an hour, and you're sweating and all, you know, you're like sweating and you're dirty. And she's like, are you okay? Fine, I'm fine. Everything's good. It's broken ankle, but that's fine. That's fine. I broke my leg, but it's fine because it's for you. That's what we're like. When you really, really like something, you actually never have a reason why you can't do it. Everything becomes a reason to do it. It is. It's the truth, right? I've seen it. I've heard it because, you know, I'm not into sports as much as before. When I was into sports before, I would, I'd play six hours of basketball straight and I want to continue. Everyone would think I'm crazy. Now it's like 15 minutes and I rethink my life. Like, huh, what is life like when your muscles are hurting? <coughs> Sub, get me out of here. Get me out. And you know what? Everyone knows it, right? And they call me out. I'm like, hey, you know, uh, Pastor Sky, like, is it because you're 40? I'm like, yeah, all right, thank you, right? But yeah, but I don't care anymore. It doesn't matter, Right? When you really, really love something, when you really look at it, what does it mean to count the cost? The interesting thing is you don't count the cost. You don't. It doesn't make a difference. There's no counting of a cost when you love or like something. But when you don't like it, you count the cost of, oh, I got to sleep. Oh, what about, you know, oh, I got a class tomorrow. Can I wake up? Oh, I got work tomorrow. Oh, I don't know if I can do this. Right? It's, 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 this is reality. Reality is, is when you don't like something as much, you start counting what you lose and the cost of what's it going to take for me in my life to do this thing. 
That's what it is. Because if you think about this, back at the time of Jesus, how many people actually, like, you know, if, if you look at the real situation, the time of Jesus was, the time of the Old Testament, everyone looked at Jesus as a heretic. People hated Jesus and like, oh my gosh, this is a cult. Your family, your friends all will hate you if you follow Jesus, pretty much. They'll hate you, right? So you think to yourself, is like, what the heck would make you want to follow this guy? What would make you want to give up everything for this person? Right? What, what, what would make you want to give it up? But people don't realize that it's still happening right now is your life right now in Christ, are you still counting the things you lose? Are you still counting those things? Well, what are my friends? What are my family? Well, what do they think about me if I come here, if I do that, if I follow you? Oh my gosh. It's going to be too hard. Are you counting the cost? Ah, tomorrow. Yeah, it's a tough day. Yeah, I don't know if I can go to church tomorrow. Uh, what? You know what? Here's a crazy thing. Uh, I, I, there's some golf guys here. What's the earliest tea time? 6 a.m., right? Which means what time you wake up usually to go to 6 a.m. tea time? Wake up at 5, right? To know how close it is. So if you're, even if you're kind of far, but it's like Pebble Beach, and the only time we have is 5.30, and you guys would say... All right, all right, Pebble Beach, okay, we're going, we're going, right? It's like, well, where is it? Well, it's, it's, it's in the West Coast. So we actually have to start four days before, right? And then we're going to prepare everything and we're going to fly over there. And on top of that, we're going to go early and we're going to sleep on the lawn, right? And when we sleep on the lawn, we'll be the first people in line, right? And what's going to happen is that's what we do because we like it. There's no counting of a cost. You do it because you really, really like it more than anything else. That's what it is. But the interesting thing is this, what if I told you church starts at 5 a.m.? Well, you know, is there another church around here? (laughs) You know, there's got to be another closer church, right, that maybe starts at around like 3, 4 p.m.? God, there's got to be something else, right? And you got to think about this. It's truth. This is what truth is, right? We got to think about it, right? If we were to tell you that we had church starting at like even 6 a.m. or 7 a.m. or 8 a.m. And we're sitting there like going, oh, this is the right perfect one for me. Starts at 7. Maybe not. Maybe I'll find another place because 7 a.m. is a little bit too early for me. You got to think about this, right? What's it worth? What's the cost? right? The cost is all there. The cost of, hey, why don't you go out and meet someone and tell them about Christ? Go spread the gospel. Well, uh, right? I don't know. Like, I, I, I don't know what to say. Like, you know, these strangers, I don't know what to do. You're at the driving range. Hey, buddy, how's it going? Hey, you got a nice swing. Hey, you want to take a picture of me? Yeah, sure. I'll come here. Yeah. <laughs> you take pictures for each other. It's like, what do you think of my backswing? I'll get a little bit of work here. So what's your name? Oh, that's so cool. How old? Oh, man, you know, we should hang out. We should go golfing together. So I'm not talking about you guys. I'm just using it as an example because I've been using it, right? And they're like... <laughs> so is there another church around here? <laughs> right? <laughs> right? You got to think about it. When it's something you like, you can easily say it. Because, you know, when it, comes to like, when it comes to movies and stuff, how many times do you talk about movies to people? You don't even know them. You just hear them like this. So did you hear about that movie, Crazy Rich Asians? Yeah, I'm not sure if I should watch it because I'm not Asian. And I'd be like, hey, dude, it's for everyone. Support the Asians. Yeah, all right? I don't even know them. But I'll say, hey, you know, it's a great movie. You got to go watch it. Support Asians, Asian power, ha, 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 ho, 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 right? Oh, I don't know what it is, right? You know, I don't know what I do. I can do that because I'm Asian, right? So when you think about this, if you really, really like it, and the crazier part is, I don't even know them, but I'll talk to them about it. I'll say it. You got to watch it. It's great. If I, if I just score it, 8.956, right? That's what it is. I can do that because Asians are good at math. 8.956, and I'd add another decimal for you, right? And that's the thing. Because you like it, you have no problem sharing it. Someone's on YouTube and says, hey, can someone help me out with this? You, write, you put up a video and say, hey, let me help you out with this. It's easy to reach out. Super easy, right? What we're looking at here is counting the cost of what it costs to actually follow Christ. Is actually, the interesting thing is the reality is it actually doesn't cost that much. 
It doesn't. What does it cost? It just costs you to like someone who made you, right? Or someone who wants to give you everything. And someone who is super good looking, right? Someone who owns the world, right? Someone who saved you from death. Right? You ever think about this is, yeah, well, if that would, wait, 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 wait. That's like, you know, someone who created me is the same as like talking about my mom and my dad, right? If someone talks like bad stuff about your mom or dad, do you kind of sit there like going, oh, they said bad stuff about my mom. Oh, well. And they go away. No, you, you talk to them right away. You say, right, whoa, you know, that's my, that's my mom. How can you talk about my mom like that? What's the cost? The cost is actually, is not a big cost. It just requires you to like something that likes you back more than anything else in this world. Everything else that you have right now, it's going to change. The way you do your hair, the way you even do your makeup, not for the guys, right? The way you, the way you, the way you style your hair, the, the clothes and the style of clothes that you wear, the things that you do, your hobbies, all those things. The interesting thing is we have some good singers, right? And some of you, you know, if, even if you're a good singer, it's possible in the future you may not want to sing. And it's possible. Unlikely, but possible. Right? It is very possible. It is. What are you basing your decisions on? What is the cost that brings you to God? You know, this reminds me of a story, right? And this story is in the very, very beginning, right, of the Old Testament. And uh, there was this guy named Abraham who became the father of faith. And Abraham, the father of faith, what was he asked to do? He's like, sacrifice your only son. He's like, the one I had when I was 100? <laughs> yes, that one. Okay, well, hey, Sarah. I know you're 90. Oh, I got to kill my son. And what did he do? He took him up the mountain. Right? And you know what the son's like going, hey dad, uh, you know, I know we're like, we're like 80, 90 years apart, and this is a mountain's pretty high, I know you're struggling and stuff, but where's the sacrifice? Like, we're going to sacrifice the top of a mountain, but we don't have anything to sacrifice. And you know, Abraham's just like, oh, uh, the Lord will provide, okay, come on, just, just, just go. He's like, why are you tying my hands, Dad? Just the Lord will provide. Just get on the altar. And what happens is, take a look at Genesis chapter 22, verse, uh, I believe, 31. Chapter 22, verse 12. That's right. And then he puts his arm up to kill his son. And God, what does God say? He's like, stop. Don't do it. Don't do anything to him. Because I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your only son from me. You haven't held your only son, which in biblical times, the first son is the most important child. The most important child of all children. It's, it is your life. It is the existence, your lifeline. That is where the lineage passes through is your firstborn son. And Abraham at 100, having a baby at 100, he sits there and God says, sacrifice your son. He says, okay, let's do it. And God's like, whoa, whoa, I didn't, I didn't really mean it. Like, I, I meant it, but like, don't touch him. Here, I, know you, I know that you fear me now. I know, what's he saying? I know that there's no one else above me. Or even more so, he says, I know you've counted the cost. Well, there is no cost. Why? Because you're the number one thing. You're number one. And God spared Abraham's son. He spared it. And this is something you have to realize right now is the sparing of the son is very interesting. Why was the son spared? The son is spared because Abraham was willing to give it up. That's why things are spared. You know, there's a very famous verse in the Bible I believe it's in Matthew chapter 10, right? And Matthew chapter 10, verse 39, says, anyone finding his life will lose it, and anyone losing his life because of me will find it. If you want to keep everything, the paradox here is you have to give it up. You got to lose it, right? 
Because I know for girls, what if, they, what if God's like, you know, how about uh, you trade uh, your skin, your beautiful skin, which has become rough and chap like leather, to follow me? And then we'd say, huh, <laughs> right? Wow, is it worth that? Is it worth your beauty? Is it worth your sports? Is it worth your sleep? Is it worth everything that you have? To follow God and to follow Christ, are you thinking about what you're losing? Or is God just number one? And every single excuse anyone can give you is a reason to do it. It's a reason to do it instead. And that's something that all of us have to think about here, especially as we're slowly winding down this year. Reflect back in the first half of this year and think to yourself is what are the things that I couldn't lose that made me die instead, that made me lose my life? And God says, is there anything worth more than the eternal loving God? And there isn't. But we have to realize more and more as we go through this life every single day is, you've got to think to yourself every moment, would I do it? And if you really put God first and you've counted the cost, it wouldn't even matter if church started on Sunday at 1 a.m., it just wouldn't. It's worth it. Why? Because for me, if I think back in high school, if that girl I like told me, oh, meet me at my house at 1 a.m., I'd be like, oh, okay, no problem, I'll be there. I'll be there right away, right? And I'd probably wait outside the house from 10 p.m. Probably would. And even more than that, probably three hours before that, I'd be doing my hair, making sure it's rock solid. So even if I fell asleep, it wouldn't have that thing sticking up in the back, right? I'd probably change my clothes four to five times. I'd probably bring a change of clothing too, just in case I smelled, right? I'd bring a towel, find, find the easiest way so I'd never be late. And this is what all of us have to realize and think too. So as all of us close our eyes at this moment, I want you too to think about what is the base of your decisions, what's holding you back. Is it What's the cost? Is there a cost? Or are there only reasons to do it? He can take you where you wanna go. He can take you where you wanna go. He can show you what you wanna go.